Hey guys, Don here, your favorite pop culture boy, and in this video, we will dive deep into the world of artists that humiliated themselves publicly in no particular order. Bow, bow, bow. Justin Bieber, one of the biggest pop stars in the world, went on a humiliating hobo tour in 2020 to promote his music, more specifically his pop and R&B single, Yummy which is considered one of Justin's worst singles of all time. At the time, newcomer rapper Roddy Rich was making waves in the industry with his single The Box. After predictions that The Box would hit the number one spot on the US Hot 100, Justin Bieber would show the world how desperate he wanted the number one song in the US by going on a hobo tour. Justin would repost on his Instagram story how his fans can manipulate and inflate the streaming numbers for Yummy. Now fans does this all the time, and it's one thing for fans to go out of their way to do this for their favorite artists, but for the artists to do this, it's kind of fraudulent. Anyway, it's nothing new but for Justin to repost it shows how desperate and shameless he was in order to get the number one song title. The post had instructions to create a playlist with Yummy on repeat at low volume even when you sleep. And it also encouraged fans outside of the US to download a VPN to help with the US billboard numbers. Like you're Justin Bieber. Everyone knows who you are. You don't have to be a super fan or even a casual fan to know he's having new music coming out because everyone knows Justin Bieber. Now I know he was going through a lot at this time, but there was really no need to be this shameless in your promotion. While Justin was stressing out over going number one, Roddy Rich would tweet, Stream Yummy by Justin Bieber. Justin took the shameless plug to another level by going live with fans only to ask them if they bought Yummy begging them to buy the song and trying to guilt trip them into buying the song as well. Thank That's you so awesome. much. Hey, have you um have you downloaded uh Yummy on iTunes yet? Yes, of course. You promise? Yes. Do you cross your heart you to so die? <laughs> What's going on? I love have you, you Jesse. Yummy on iTunes? De Guadalajara I mean, from you, Guadalajara. Have you, bought, have, you bought, have you bought Yummy on iTunes? All right, I'm doing everything I can on my end. So, yeah, let, let, let's get it to number one. Let's go, go stream it right now. If you're on here, go stream Yummy. Like, please, because I really want this freaking spot be fire um okay judah love you bro Sh judah stream yummy please i need all of the help i can get hi daisy swirsky love you all right guys go stream Bye. Now, nothing is wrong with asking your fans if they bought your music, but it seems like that was his main objective and nothing else mattered to him, which made it seem like his fans' purpose in life was just to support him and he didn't care about anything else. In the race to the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100, Roddy Rich seized the number one spot, leaving Justin Bieber to settle at number two. We can forgive Justin Bieber for humiliating himself like this publicly, but for DJ Khaled who embarrassed himself in 2016 is less forgivable, as he showed his true colors. DJ Khaled You know who he is, famous producer who won't give the artist on his song the room to just do what they do without him screaming his own name at the top of his lungs. Tyler the Creator Tyler started out as a more polarizing figure in rap, who has transformed his image and sound so much so, the general public now has his music on their playlists. Now he is still polarizing with his music, but his music is more digestible now, when compared with his initial music. Back to DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled. In addition to making music, DJ Khaled is also known for being positive, giving us motivational speeches, 
and fitness advice, just a wholesome individual. However, in 2019, Khaled's image of lifestyle goals and positivity would come crashing down after Tyler the Creator's album Igor beat DJ Khaled's album Father of Assad to the number one spot on the Billboard 200, leaving Khaled to settle for number two. And Khaled was pissed causing him to post a video online humiliating himself while also showing he was a sore loser. To sum up the video, Khaled basically said he made the better album, with songs people actually listen to and called the other album mysterious shit that nobody listens to, which many took as a diss towards Tyler the Creator. Here's the thing. I make albums so people can play it, and you actually hear it. You know driving in your car, you hear another car playing it, go to the barbershop, you hear them playing it, you know, turn the radio on, and you hear them playing it. It's playing everywhere. It's called great music. It's called albums that you actually hear the songs, Khaled said in the video. In addition to embarrassing himself publicly, DJ Khaled would also expose to the world that he is not the positive, motivating, and healthy guy he portrays in the public, but a guy who cares more about numbers and less about quality music. To add insult to injury, and rightfully so, Tyler the Creator would destroy DJ Khaled's public image even more in an interview when he was asked about the situation. I had every person in the industry, everyone on that fucking album, everyone. Everyone, Cardi B, 21 Savage, Travis Scott, Post Malone, Beyonce J, everyone who sells billions of records and the fact that I beat him with this that isn't parallel to all the popping music right now was fucking crazy, bro. On your dome. Another humiliating moment was back in 2015 when Madonna forcefully kissed rapper Drake on stage at Coachella. Bitch, don't hang your shit on me. Now, I know Drake's reaction, the desperation to get away from the kiss, was because of the lip gloss Madonna was wearing. Regardless, the entire thing is embarrassing to watch. And no, it's not because of Madonna's age, it's just cringe as fuck. Because she tried to look cool while walking off, like, yeah, I did that, I'm Madonna. After literally sucking the soul out of Drake's body, only to get a what the fuck was that response. Beyonce is the ultimate performer in music today. The singer is noted for being in total control when performing. The performer is able to maintain an almost perfect singing voice while dancing in high heels, something most performers of today cannot do. As perfect as Beyonce is, Beyonce has had her fair share of embarrassing moments while on stage. For example, Beyonce's hair getting caught in a fan while performing her hit Halo back in 2013. Beyonce leaning in to kiss 50 Cent at the 2007 VMAs only to realize 50 Cent wasn't looking her way at all. As embarrassing as those moments were, they still cannot compare to what happened to Beyonce while on her Beyonce Experience concert tour while performing her song Ring the Alarm. Beyonce would fall head first while on stage. Beyonce's tour, The Beyonce Experience, had an arrangement of stairs the singer performed on while in high heels. Like the true performer Beyonce is, she got right back up and continued like nothing happened. Beyonce had an humiliating fall publicly and was able to recover quickly, acting like nothing happened. However, we can say the same for R&B singer Miguel. His fall on stage would not just be humiliating, but extremely painful for him and audience members. At the 2013 Billboard Music Awards at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, Miguel hit the stage to perform. While performing, Miguel thought it would be a great idea to leap over the audience member's head in the stage pit. But, um, homeboy came crashing down on the audience instead. Mainly a woman's head. It was the most intense teabagging in history. Adam! Winner. I'm coming for that ass again. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj are two of the most successful rappers of all time. The rappers have a lot going for them. They have money, huge stand bases, 
and envious music careers, but the rappers would fall prey to the infamous rap beef, resulting in one of the most humiliating rap beefs of all time. In 2018, Cardi B was riding a new wave of success and fame in music. Nicki Minaj was already a thriving veteran in rap at the time, but before the rise of Cardi B, no female rapper on the scene could hold a candle to Nicki Minaj when it came to turning out hits and charting high on the charts as well. But within two years of being signed to a major label, Atlantic Records, Cardi was hitting heights we've never seen before from a female rapper in a very long time. By 2018, Cardi Cardi B had garnered multiple number ones on the US Hot 100, a feat Nicki was yet to achieve after hitting the mainstream since the late 2000s. Now because of this revelation, fans and the industry would pit them against each other. After light subs and not so light subs had been exchanged between the rappers via interviews, tweets, and shady rap lyrics, in September 2018 at the Harper Bazaar Icon party, Cardi would try to beat the brakes off of Nicki Minaj and even throw a shoe at the Chung Lee rapper. And it all started because Nicki Minaj allegedly liked a tweet that was questioning Cardi B's skills as a mother in a negative way. Footage of the incident would hit the internet shortly after, showing Cardi B being held back by security. Meanwhile, Nicki Minaj was surrounded by a swarm of security. Cardi was escorted out of the event with a huge cocoa on her forehead, which was allegedly caused by a security guard or one of Nicki's goons named Ra Ali. Don't get me wrong, I like Cardi B, but Cardi B is a hood booger, and I'm sure at the time she was not humiliated, but in retrospect, I'm sure this is something she is now not proud of. And she could have ruined her reputation, as this was a high society event that was interrupted by a hood booger newcomer in rap and an industry veteran that likes to sneak this her peers. If you want a part 2, please like the video and leave a comment on moments you think should be included. I am Don, your pop culture whore, and I will see you in the next one.